Hello folks, and welcome back to Let's Play, oh, welcome to Let's Play Forever Kingdom. That's right, it's finally happening. It came in on, it actually came in on Tuesday? No, it didn't come in on Tuesday, it came in on Wednesday of last week. But unfortunately, uh, the method of which I had to record it was stupid. Like, it had stupid bunch of interlacing lines. Seriously, OBS, fix that. So, what I had to do was get a new program, and now it records as clearly as I can see it right now, and this is all in thanks to an, an a anonymous donor, well not donor, but tipper, who doesn't want to have his name revealed, not that I know it, but because of him I was able to not only buy this game, but the program with which to record from my consoles at a better Freaking, you know, it's not gonna be blurry. Like, uh, what I see on the screen is gonna appear on my computer. So, enough gushing about the anonymous donor, and uh, let's just go to New Game. Let's, let's do the training. I've actually done about two hours and 30 minutes of, you know, playing this game. Thing is, though, it looked like balls. <laughs> it looked bad. I would not want to subject you guys to it, despite the fact that in my, you know, earlier last year I was subjecting you guys to my poor editing skills of, uh, Dark Watch. That was it, yeah. Anyways, let's begin with the tutorial. Palmyra actions are physical or magic-based attacks that cause serious damage to an enemy. To activate, simply press the button assigned to each character. Action points are required to use Palmyra action. Stage indicates the character currently cur the get the, sorry when I watch see typos like that it's just messes with my head. This gauge indicates the character current AP. The number displayed next to the gauge specifies when PA can be used. Oh no, it's a pig rat. Let's hit triangle. When you hit an enemy or receive damage, your AP gauge increases. Once this gauge is filled, the number of times you can use a PA attack increases by one. Press the square button. Press that button. Press the circle. This is how Palmyra actions are activated. Combo time. The timing, the timing needs to be precise in order to perform a Palmyra action combo. Attack your enemy by activating the Palmyra actions. A target ring is displayed around the enemy, only when the controlled character attacks using the Palmyra action. This will ensure that the char that the enemy will be the main target when the other characters activate the Palmyra actions. Palmyra action can be used if there is no target ring, however this will not guarantee the creature you wish to attack. When the enemy is attacked, two hit displays. Indicate that the Pyre Indicating that the Palmyra attack was successful. Press the next character's Palmyra action button when the enemy is hit. Be sure the timing is correct when using Palmyra actions. The target might be missed if the button is simply pressed. And there we go. 
Overkill displays when the enemy's health is at zero. Continued use of Palmyra actions increases the chance of items dropping for each single hit. Also, a Palmyra piece will appear after the combo attack. Combo displays when the character's PA attacks were successful in, in order for each of the three characters. AP increases by one with a successful combo. In other words, if you keep performing COMBO, Palmyra action attacks can be indefinite. The game was paused each time, blah blah blah, telling you that this happens in real time. And that ends the tutorial. Which means we actually get into the meat of the bones of the game. Yeah! Edinburgh. A continent steeped in magic, where the legendary Biliana trees have flourished for longer than mankind has existed. Edinburgh. Home to the lost civilization of the Rubain Empire. Once vast and mighty, now lost to antiquity. Edinburgh, where only four villages have withstood the fall of the Rubain Empire, each with populations that once lived in harmony with the mysterious Biliana trees. Salta, Moria, Seklu, and Toledo are the remaining villages that exist on this continent. Salta and Moria have been at war for more than a decade. Their dispute comes from Moria's objection to Salta's decision to clear away the Biliana forest, to provide farmland to feed its people. Moria wants to protect the Biliana Forest. They despise Salta's plan to destroy the forest for their own selfish needs. The conflict began as a series of small skirmishes, but soon escalated into all-out warfare as the deteriorating environment caused widespread upheaval. Moria and Salta were hopelessly deadlocked in battle after battle. Then one day, quite unexpectedly, the fighting ceased. This was due to a cataclysmic event, later referred to as the Eve of Disaster. The military forces on both sides of the conflict were damaged beyond repair. The Salta army suffered the greatest number of losses, and since the Eve of Disaster, the war has been permanently halted. Not learning from history, however, those in command of the Salta army began the gradual process of rebuilding the army, waiting for the right moment to launch a new assault on Moria. The day had come where I decided to take up my sword and begin my journey. I did so in order to face a destiny that has been thrust upon me, a destiny that can only be described as accursed. What's wrong, Fiana? We're almost there. I don't know. We need to find the village before sunset. Fiana, what's wrong? Did you hear that? Huh? Uh, no, I didn't hear anything. I can hear it. Somebody's calling for help! Fayana, wait! What are you doing? Let her go! What's this? How dare you? Let her go! Who are you? What do you plan on doing with the girl? <laughs> I don't have to answer to you. Ah. Darius, be careful, he's a swordsman. Damn! He's only using one hand! That's enough, Drumholt. You don't have time for this. Darius! Ah! You're just going to let them go? Just watch. Get off me! Fiona! You missed 
Mr. Darcel, you always underestimate people. That's a bad habit of yours. Enough. She ran away. We must go and find her. She's probably going to the dandelion field. Wait. What did you do to us? A simple lesson to teach you not to interfere with other people's affairs. You! I don't have time for childish games right now. If you want to play, perhaps later. Let's go. Very well. What's going on? I don't have any strength. This is probably... Rai, you know about this? Well, I've heard of it. It's a forbidden curse. The soul bind. Curse? What's that supposed to mean? Well, it means that we're all sharing our lives together now. When one of us is hurt, we all will share and feel the pain. If one of us dies, then the others will also die. Oh, that's fun. I wonder who they were. They're more than just kidnappers. We'll find out when we catch them. Let's go. Are you okay, Fiana? Are you hurt? I'm okay. Faye, do you know who those two men were? Huh? No. No? I thought maybe you might have remembered something. I don't know them. But the girl that was being attacked... You know the girl? No, I don't. But I felt as if I had known her. I feel nostalgic. Nostalgic? Yeah. I'm not sure. I wonder why I feel this way. It's strange. Fanna, maybe she's a friend. Or even perhaps part of your family? No way! That's not possible! Because I... I was afraid of her. Afraid? Yeah. I was afraid of her. More than either of those men. I wanted to help her. At the same time, I also wanted to run away. Why do I have these feelings? Fayanna, don't think about it too much. Nothing we can do, let's be on our way. We'll find out more about her when we catch those men. Mm, can't you just eat that s glorious early 2000s CGI right up? Ah, oh, PS2, don't ever change. Oh wait, that's right, no one's developing anything for you anymore. Damn it. I love the PS2. It was an awesome era in gaming, if you ask me. What's this? Nobody's here. I think this has something to do with the eve of disaster. Disaster? You don't know about the bizarre incident that happened about a year ago? The mutants that suddenly appeared and attacked both Zolta and Moria? They devoured the humans and then disappeared. Please, stop. I'm sorry if I made you upset. There's nothing here. Let's move on. Okay, we're finally freaking playing the game. Boo, yeah. Alright, so first off, I want you guys to know that the controls of this are a little funky. For one, the analog stick can be used to walk around, but it doesn't use the camera. You just use R2 to look in directions, much like the first step of this, which, okay. But if you're not going to use the analog sticks. Don't use the analog stick for movement. So I'm just going to use the D-pad. Excuse me. Now, access to attack, as you saw back in the Palmyra actions thing, that the rest of the buttons are pretty much just used to attack things. Which, let's use it on this piggy over here. Ha! Whoa. Now, the stuff that the enemies are currently dropping is called Zo? 
Zoe? Whatever. The pronunciation of it's always funky, I think. But it is our currency. So anytime I need to buy something and I need to grind, just assume that I'm killing stuff for those. Also, back to life extracts. Keep in mind, this is a From Software game, so expect the story to be cryptic and the puzzles to be what the hell. How is that even supposed to make sense? Worthy. At least to me. Hello, puppy. There's a strange looking puppy. We're all just looking at this doggy now. Don't be scared. We won't hurt you. It doesn't look too scared, Fana. What? What do you mean? Something with that windmill? Ah, uh, yes, because a dog turning his head over to look at a windmill totally means he is just pointing you towards the windmill. Yes, that makes sense. From software, we don't have to explain anything. Yeah. Alright, that upgrade actually means that uh, characters have leveled up. Well, one of the characters is leveled up. Now, as you could probably assume from the uh, big ol' health bar that says soul, that is actually the way that we're going to have to gauge our life. In that, uh, we don't all have our individual amounts of health. We actually all share the same life bar. So one of us gets hit, the other one gets hit. One of us dies, we all die. It's, uh... Interesting system. I'll call, I'll say that at the least. It gets a little bit annoying and a little bit tedious, especially when there's a butt ton of enemies on the screen, all of them trying to kill you. But regardless, oh, the mushroom mechanic is here, by the way. I'll uh, I'll show you guys that when we hit the E O D. Oh. Ah, overkill. Nice. Oh, oh, there's a Palmyra piece. Now, unlike in the other in the first game, Palmyra pieces are used to upgrade your equipment. Uh, blue is five points, yellow is ten points, and I think red is fifty. I think it was fifty. Also, this elevator. Whoever designed this elevator was maniacal. Waiting on an elevator. I'm trying to remember anything else I need to tell you guys. Like, again, I played like a whole two and a half hours of this. Decided my fo the footage that I recorded was complete and total crap. And decided to scrap it and re record it. So, you can thank me later. Also, I'm sorry if I randomly cut out my voice. Because I am just getting over some sniffles and coughs. This gem, it's very powerful. Looks like it belongs to the it plot. It looks like it was used to ward off some type of evil. I wonder if the people would have survived if they had this gem during the eve of disaster. Probably not. I heard that it happened so sudden. It must have been hard to get over here. Yeah, we're just looting dead people's houses now. Eh, come on. There we go. Ooh, revive gem. Now the revive gem works much like um, I forget what it was called. There was another gem that worked like it in the first game. But pretty much when you die, you get the option to revive right on the spot. And if you don't, well it's game over. Whoa. Nice person hit dude. Alright. Now here's an annoying mechanic that I've only discovered recently. Well, that is not these things, but rather is attached to items. Now see this box? That's a Palmyra bee. Once you're hit by it, you are muted, which means, or er, muted silence, which means you can't actually use your Palmyra actions. 
which of course is like a freaking annoying. But if you can manage to kill a Palmyra B, then you get a red piece of Palmyra. Which, if you recall, that's a lot of freaking upgrade points. Which fantastic. Uh, let's see, since we got, got that holy gem, let's quickly have a little chat over here with this lovely lady, which ran away from the bad people. Isn't that the girl? No, there's like 50 purple-haired girls wandering around. What do you think? Awesome walk cycle. Creepy door closing. You... Oh, damn it. They're supposed to actually say, Oh, we can't even go through here. It's a barrier. I forgot about that part. We did it, Darius. What's wrong? You're thinking about that girl, huh? I wonder who she is. She was being chased by those two people. Thayana. Now, I'm not going to go that way just yet. I haven't fully explored this area. And there is quite a bit to this area, actually. Surprisingly. You know, besides rat pig things to fight. There's actually a little bit of loot in here. Well, loot and a pig. Guess a pig counts. And another Palmyra Bee. Ow. Oh, come. There is no hitting that thing. There just isn't. Like, I've managed to do it once. And I was trying to farm those suckers before. Anyways, let's try it this way. My, those mounds look suspicious. I think I saw something. Faye, get back. Now the horrible part is that I'm going into this fight with two of my party members muted. Brilliant. Awesome. Damn freaking tactic. Oh, damn. Still had some overkill, though. Oh, I think the overkill happens only when you combo so many times. Yeah, see? There it goes again. Yeah. And yeah. Ow. Damn. Upgrade too. Where's that piggy? Piggy! Piggy! Awesome. Alright. Now, that's the... Estus Flask? I nearly call it an Estus Flask. Oh, you see this? This is the broken key. Sound storage, you can't get through. Oh well. Guess we're lost. We're doomed. I know where the key is. Don't worry. Let's see. I'm trying to remember other things to tell you guys. Um, Darius here is the physically strongest. But he doesn't do that well with Magical Pimera, and he's actually the slowest walking of the three. Ruyan, which I've actually a lot of the text and people say like Raya, Ryan, whatever, is actually slightly faster than the Darius, and in between the other two when it comes to physical and magical aptitude. He's the average guy. And Feyana is super awesome with magic, but not so good with armors or equip or uh, physical stuff. So you won't probably won't see her slashing everything around the place. Hey you puppy. What's this? A really ugly looking dog. Looks like a key. Oh, the key, okay. What a strange shape for a key. And it must be used for an important lock. Was there such a lock around here? If it's important, maybe it's in a place not so easy to find. I don't know about not easy to find, but it was definitely kind of a bitch to get through all those rats. Especially with everyone being muted. Well, everyone but Ruyan. By the way, I'll probably say stuff like Suyin or Fuyin or other variations of his name that's not really his name. In fact, I'm not even sure if Ruyin's his name. 
I've looked at it like a billion times, making sure that uh, his name is actually his name. Starsky! Oh, hi, Piggy. Oh. Well, I guess I'll just uh, pick up this pumpkin head then. Now. Excuse me again, goddamn. Now. Equipment works much like it did before. Sword, helmet, armor, she, uh, so, uh, shoes. They're called shoes, Darius. And an accessory. The accessory allows you to use the different Palmyra actions. Uh, item. This is actually where you have to use your life extract from now. Which kind of sucks. But, meh. Help. It's just a bunch of help information. Uh, Yes, okay. You can increase the attack and defend an attribute for weapons. Similarly, you can increase defense, thunder, earth, fire, and ice for armor. The max upgrade for items is 100 points. Yep. Blue for overkill. If you combo successfully, it's yellow. And Palmyra Bees, which is that little yellow bastard that was flying around silencing me, was a red Palmyra. Uh, there's a bunch of other things, but one of the things that I find interesting, I don't know if they implemented in the previous game, is fashion evaluation. The shop owner may evaluate your equipment combinations in order to achieve a fashion rank. Depending on the evaluation, you will earn one of five types. Your rank will not change until you are evaluated again. Furthermore, each character can be evaluated separately. You may view your custom rank by achieving your pro accessing your profile. Having a ranking does give benefits and increases as you activate higher ranks. Whew. There's a lot of information I've taken in this game. I'm just going to say that out loud. Now, as party leader, I dictate that you shall wear the pumpkin head. Isn't it glorious? Just look at it. It's a pumpkin head. He's now pumpkin head. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I suppose it's about time that I need to wrap up this video, but at the same time, I still have the save point to show you guys. You saw that floating little crystal over there? That's the save point. It's kind of a pain, uh, this system of the save point. For one, the loading into it is actually a lot faster. Just straight up faster. Like, BAM! For two, holy crap, everything's creepy here. You look a lot quicker from here than from the last game. Each of, each of these shops are different ones, but they're only accessible at different points, and each time we have different gear. So, for example, this guy will have these four things, but the next save point may not even have an armor shop, or will have completely different items. Uh, case in point, though, still can't look at stuff you can't afford, which is a butt. And this big guy is where we actually save. But besides that, there is we give him the mushroom for a one-time half-off discount on any one item that we purchase. Training, which goes through the Palmyra action training we literally just did before doing all the things. Upgrade, which allow us to use the Palmyra pieces that we get on our different piece of pieces of equipment. Fashion, he evaluates us, gives us some sort of ranking. I need to look into that more, see what the rankings actually do, if it's worth a damn. Coliseum. Mo- Excuse me. Now, the Coliseums are where I kind of have a gripe with this game. You see, the Coliseums, uh, there, certain save points have them. And once you defeat a Coliseum, you get an item at the end, which is cool. It depends on the item and whatnot. I've defeated this Coliseum before, but... The item, I think, was really silly, but that's neither here nor there. The thing about the Colosseum is, it's how you get the Moonlight Sword in this From Software game. What you need to do is go to each save point that has a Colosseum, defeat said Colosseum, and then at the final Colosseum, once you've defeated it, you go to the final, final Colosseum. So you essentially go two Colosseums before you actually, you know, get the Moonlight Sword. I don't know where the final Colosseum is, so I have got no clue about that. 
All I know is that that's how I get the Moonlight Sword. Which, you know me, I'm not the Moonlight Warrior without the Moonlight Sword. And then, save. They won't forget you. <laughs> now, it's actually a pretty fast save system. It's like 10 seconds. You can even count it together. Two, three, four, five, six. Oh, not even. Alright. With that said, and my throat deciding, oh hey, I'm gonna be a right bastard, then it's about time to wrap this video up. Next time around, I shall show you guys, at least show you guys the Coliseum, and continue with the rest of the, continue on with game, because there's quite a bit of game to get through, if, uh, how long is, is this game has anything to say about this. So, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoy this Let's Play. You've been waiting for it for a while, ever since, you know, I finished Evergrace 2, or Evergrace 1, essentially. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Cheers.